looking at star brightness and color, there is a correlation in the, the, the relationship between the size of a star, its brightness, and its color. And we can use that to our advantage to learn more about stars and help us understand the universe a little bit better. Now we saw that uh, stars come in different sizes and that small stars burn, we use the term burn even though it's fusing, they fuse through their hydrogen slower, they last longer, and they're cooler and redder, and they're called red dwarfs. Whereas large stars burn through their fuel a lot faster, they live fast, they die young, and they're extremely hot and they tend to be bluish in color. So the color and brightness are related to the size of the star. Uh, we have a little video, uh, and I'm not going to play the whole thing, but there's a, there's a link to it, and it goes through... Where is it now? There we are. It goes through a variety of the different types of sizes of objects and sizes of stars. So I'm going to kind of skip through this a little bit. So we're starting with things like the Moon and Mercury and Mars and Venus and Earth. So these are all planets, of course, then moving into the giant planets to compare them for size. There's Jupiter, largest planet in the solar system, and there's the Sun. So the Sun is really big compared to everything else in our solar system, but our Sun is not a terribly massive star. So we're going through successively larger and larger stars. So there's Arcturus, there's our Sun right down there, and there's Arcturus up to Aldebaran, uh, a red giant. Rigel is a blue supergiant. The Pistol Star is called a hypergiant. Uh, Antares, and we can't even see our sun. That's how big these things are. Okay, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then this one is the largest known star, VY Canis Majoris. It's called a red hypergiant. So when you see a star in the sky, it could be uh, a dim star and uh, close by, or a very bright star and very far away. The relationship and color of color and brightness helps us to figure out how far away a star is. But in order to do that, we need to learn a bit more about the, the bright stars and how the, the, the system of brightness operates. Okay. So apparent brightness uh, refers to how bright something looks to us. So if you stand a short distance from a bright light bulb, it looks very, very bright. But if you stand very far away from that same light bulb, it looks much dimmer. So even though we can say that the absolute brightness of that light bulb remains the same, its apparent brightness, it appears brighter when it's closer, and it appears less bright when it's farther away. If you are looking at the sun, for example, if you're on Earth, the sun looks much brighter than if you were on Mars or on Pluto. And if you were standing on Mercury, then the sun would look much, much brighter than it does on Earth because you'd be much closer. So two stars that look the same brightness in the sky may actually be, uh, they may be about the same uh, real brightness but and the same distance, or maybe one is much, much brighter but farther away, and so it appears that they have the same brightness from where we stand. So we have a standard reference, and that standard reference is if you were to take a star and if you could drag that, right, get a great big giant tractor beam or something and drag that star to a distance of 32.6 light years from us, okay, which is a distance called 10 parsecs. Uh, the parsec is a, is a unit of of distance that's about three and a quarter light years. So if you could bring a star to a distance of 10 parsecs, how bright would it appear to us? And, and we use that as the measure of absolute brightness. Okay. There's a couple ways we can refer to brightness. We can refer to brightness using a, a scale called visual magnitude, and we'll talk a little bit about that and what that scale means. We can also, I'm just gonna move myself up here. Uh, we can also use, uh, compare it to our sun. So we could say a star is 100 times brighter or 1,000 times brighter than our sun, or we can give it a number in terms of visual magnitude. We saw the visual magnitude numbers when we were doing the activity with the 
uh, the, the Sloan Sky Survey, right? So the magnitudes for each of those colors was a, a, a visual magnitude value. And the way it works is the bigger the number, the fainter the star. So a star with a magnitude zero is very bright. A star with magnitude one is fainter, two is fainter, three is fainter, four, five, six, and so on. And each time you go down a number, it's by about a factor of two and a half. So a star that is a magnitude two is two and a half times fainter than a star of magnitude one. A star of magnitude three is two and a half times dimmer than a star of magnitude two, and so on. Our sun, to put it in perspective here, because it's the one we know, it's close by, it has a surface temperature of about 5,800 degrees Kelvin, and uh, we classify it as a yellow star, uh, and there's a type G star, this, which is uh, this letter designation. So our sun, if viewed from a distance of 10 parsec, so its absolute magnitude, is would be about 4.8. Now, to put that in perspective, generally from the city, we can't see anything below about magnitude three or three and a half, which means that we couldn't see our own star or a star that's the same as ours from the city, which means that our sun really is not that bright a star, or in other words, pretty much every single star you can see with the naked eye in the sky is bigger and brighter than our sun. Okay, now how far, how can we tell how far away things are? Uh, parallax is a way of telling how far things are. Parallax is a change in the view as you change position. So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to demonstrate parallax. I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to use this blue snowball microphone, okay? So, now the microphone is closer to the computer than I am. So, if I move the computer, the microphone seems to move. Right? because the closer object seems to move relative to the background. That's parallax. With stars, because the Earth is in orbit around the Sun, it's moving, just like my, my computer was a moment ago. So if the star is on this side of the Sun, or the, the Earth is on this side of the Sun, we're looking kind of that way at stars, and if we're on this side, we're looking kind of that way. And so relatively nearby stars will actually appear to wobble a little bit against the background. So for relatively nearby stars, we can use that process of parallax to figure out what uh, the, the distance is. Okay, so this is kind of a, an extreme example, but as the Earth moves from one side of the sun to the other, a relatively nearby star is going to shift in comparison to the background stars. Right? So what we would see is this star, if these stars are very far away and this star is closer, it's going, to, it's going to shift a little bit depending on uh, which time of year, which side of the sun uh, the Earth is on. But how far away are those background stars? Well, one of the things we can do is we can use n information about the nearby stars to figure out information about the far away stars. And one of those things is that relationship between brightness and color and distance. So what we can do is we can take all the nearby stars when we know the distances and we can look at how their color and we can look at their brightness and we can plot that on a graph. So what we're doing is, is graphing the brightness of a star against the, 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 the color, and the color is an indication of surface temperature, right? Think of something that's, that's heating up. If it's, if, it's, if it's just getting hot, it kind of glows deep red, and then the hotter it gets, uh, it gets brighter and brighter, and it goes from, from red to, to kind of orangey to yellowy, and then to white, and then blue, right? So the hotter it gets, the, the whiter and bluer it gets. Right, so we can use the color to gauge the surface temperature of the stars. So if we take all that information from all the stars we do know, the position of, and we plot them, we get a graph that looks something like this. So we have the red end of the spectrum, so the cooler stars here, and the hotter stars over here, and then in terms of brightness, and uh, this is brightness of 
compared to the brightness of the sun. So this would be the brightness of our sun here. So anything up here is 10 times brighter, 100 times brighter, 1,000 times brighter. And here, 1 tenth, 1 hundredth, 1 thousandth is bright. And we get this pattern with kind of a, a central sort of a, a, a S-like curve here. And then a group of stars up here and a group of stars down here. The diagram is called a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, or sometimes we just call it an HR diagram. And in simplified form, it kind of looks like that. Okay, And what it means is uh, we can use this diagram to plot stars, because we know stars are going to be in certain locations on this diagram. And we can use that to help us figure things out. And where things are on this diagram is basically down this central band Anything on that central band is in its main sequence. It's fusing hydrogen. So if we can look at a star and figure out it's a main sequence star, and we know how bright it is, well, uh, actually, all we need to know is its color. If we know its color, we know where it lies along here. And if we know where it lies along here, then we know a lot about it. We know how bright it is. Okay, and if we know how bright it is, and we can compare that to how bright it looks, just like those light bulbs, right? If you know a light bulb is a 20 watt bulb and it looks really, really bright, then chances are it's really close. If you know a light bulb is a 100 watt bulb and it's really, really faint, you know it's, it's very, very far away. So just by knowing a star's color, we can tell how bright it actually is. And from that, we can use how bright it looks compared to how bright it actually is to figure out if it's, if it's close or very far away. Okay. Uh, anything that is beyond the main sequence, we have our giants and supergiants up here and our white dwarfs down here. Okay. So if, the, if it, the star appears dimmer than its absolute magnitude, then it's obviously farther away than 10 parsecs. And if it appears brighter than its absolute magnitude, then it's closer than 10 parsecs.